everyone, welcome to the how to create a 3D Peridot pet effect tutorial. Effect House is teaming up with Niantic to launch a new challenge for Peridot, the new game for adorable magical AR pets. Create a Peridot themed effect for a chance to win up to $10,000. So for this challenge, we've actually provided a bunch of assets for you from Niantic and they're in our asset library. So that's this button up here or it's this button here. And let me click into that. Cool. And you'll see on our homepage, we kind of have our featured assets and that's gonna be a plethora of, you know, some of our 2D or 3D, some of our screen effects. But if you click down here into Peridot, that's where you'll access all of the Peridot assets you can use for your effects. And you're welcome to use your own assets as well if you want to, but this is where the assets we're providing for you live. You'll see we've got four 3D characters. So there's blue, and then the rest of the gang. Um, we've got some 2D images of Peridots in various poses. We've got some icons from the game. And then we have a bunch of miscellaneous 2D assets as well that are also from the, the game. So how you actually pull these into your project file is you click one. If you wanna learn more about it, you can click into it and then it will give you a little information about the size. And What's the difference between import or import and apply? Yeah, so importing will look like this here. So it's just gonna import it directly into your asset panel. And if you import and apply here, I'll show you a good example with one of our 3D assets. So if I import and apply some glasses, for example, it's both going to import them into my assets panel, but then it's also gonna apply them. So they go directly on my face. They already have head tracking built into them. They've already got an occluder going on. So it's just a quick way to put it right into your effect file. I'm going to delete the cat eye glasses unless maybe we'll bring them back later for a fun little effect. For the sake of this, I'll just be importing it. Because these are large files, they're going to take a second to import. We added a lot of 3D animations in there, which makes the 3D files a little bit heavy in terms of the size. So let's say you're only using the running motion and the sitting motion. You can delete the other animations to make sure your file size is a little smaller. Cool. So I've imported it. And then this icon here, if you look closely, is called the prefab. And it's a little box with a little tiny P on top of it. And that's what you're going to want to drag up into your hierarchy panel. And that's going to make blue appear. So now blue's in our effect. And you'll see blue is hovering around. Let me find my visual scripting for now. Blue's got an animation applied to him or her or them. And then by default, blue's just going to run through all their animations. So I think there's seven built in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. And by default, blue's just going to cycle through all those animations. If you click up here, this is kind of the, the master uh, asset. That's where you can kind of move blue around. If you click this one, you can rotate blue. If you click this one, you can scale blue. Cool. And then you can also do all that if you want to actually import some values over here in the property panel by typing them in. I'm actually going to reset all of that. Cool. I absolutely love the animation. Look at them just floating in space and running around. Cool. I'm sure some of you are going to want to put your Peridots into AR space. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. I will disappear for a second. I'm going to click over here on our, our built-in media for you to preview effects on, but I'm still here. Don't worry. And then I'll go down here. This is where you can change these test videos and I'll pick one of our environment videos. So I'll do ground. Blue isn't actually locked to the ground yet. You can see that blue is not moving with the camera. So if I want it to look like blue is actually on the ground, what I will do is I'll click this camera. I'll add a component to it. I'll go to AR capability and I'll add a device tracker. And you'll see that changes this camera icon. So now this is an AR camera. And what that means now is it's actually detecting the ground plane. And you'll see that blue is actually locked to it. Let me change blue's animation to one of the other ones. Let's do sitting and let's scale blue up a little bit. So you see now it looks like actually blue's sitting on the ground. Um, so if you want to put a Peridot into AR space, you just want to remember to select your camera and then add this device tracker to it. 
is there a place where we can download the 3D assets so we can modify it in other 3D programs? Cool, good question. So they only live in our asset library. If you save your project file, so file save as, actually in that project file, you'll be able to see the assets. And then if you want to, you can pull one out of there and then you can modify it in a external program. Let's remove this AR camera. I'll show you all how to add a shadow as well because I think that adds some nice quality to an effect. If we go to AR tracking, we can add an AR plane. So that's going to be a plane that sits right on the real world plane. So you can't see it right now, but there's actually a plane right here on ground level in this in the scene. And by default, it has a material applied to it called matte shadow. And what that material means is it's going to render clear. It's only going to show shadows. So let's try to actually cast blue shadow onto this plane. So to do that, I'll select my light, I'll cast shadow, and then I will select, let's just do the body for the sake of this and cast shadow. And you'll see right away, a shadow appears on the ground plane. And then if I, you know, if I wanted to do this good, I would turn it on for the ears and I would turn it on for all the ears. Cool, and then you can see some more shadows appear. And it's looking a little harsh, obviously, right off the bat. So you wanna go into your light, advanced settings, and then we want to do a soft shadow, I think. And we also wanna turn the strength down, and let's turn the softness up a little bit. Cool, now you can see it looks a lot more like blue's actually grounded in, in the space. Let me try a different, let's see how it looks on ground. Cool. He's a little, he's on, he's sitting on the corner, so he's going to look better probably. Let's try road. Cool. And if I switch the animation out, it should all update. Let's make blue run. Cool. So you can see that shadow really like grounds, grounds them and makes it look a little more realistic. So that's how to do that. Wow. Now do... It looks like it's actually in the world and right? that's so cute. I'm gonna delete the AR plane and I'm actually gonna remove this device tracker component. So we'll just have them floating in space <gasps> again. That's so too big. big. We'll scale <laughs> them down. So when you switch to AR space, it's gonna affect the scale. That's why when I remove the device tracker, it scales up. I'm gonna show you all just a couple other things you might wanna do. So if you want to control the animations that you're you're actually cycling through. I'll just quickly show you this setup here I built in advance. So this is our visual scripting panel. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. What this setup's doing, and I can kind of quickly walk through it, is we have a node called 3D Animation Controller, and that controls which of these animations we want to use for our effects. So which animation we want to set for the object. So I just wanted to do a setup where when I click the screen, it's going to jump to the next animation. So to do that, I've used a screen tap node. A sequence node takes one trigger and it splits it into two or three or more triggers. So one of the screen taps I've split up to go into a counter node. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase a counter from one to seven. So every time I screen tap, you can see down here, two, three, four, et cetera. And that is feeding into which clip, so which animation clip I want to play. And then I also have a variable, and you know, I'm not gonna get into everything here, but please ask questions if you have them later. You can make variables, just kind of like in, in math class. So I've called this one count, and I'm also feeding that counter into this count variable. And then I've also got that same variable here and I've used an equal node to see when that count equals seven. So if it equals seven, here's the if node, if equals seven, reset my counter back to zero. And that's because we have seven animations. So I want it to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, reset zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if this works. Last step is you'll see this is red. I need to delete that out and we actually need to pull the animation. So we'll click this pin to graph icon, get the animation, and then we will plug that in. And if all goes well, when I click, you'll see that it cycles through 
the various animations. And I don't know that you'll want to cycle through them all, but this is just a way and you can kind of play around with this. If you wanted to jump between two animations or you wanted to start kind of sitting and then you wanted to run when someone, you know, opens their mouth or something, you can work from this setup hopefully to figure that all out. And again, if you have questions, we are on Discord and on the forum. Let me show you all a few little other tricks maybe you can use in your effects. If we wanted to add a little accessory to our Peridot, how would we do that? I will show you. So again, we've got lots of models in our asset library. I'm just gonna pull some of our 3D models. Let's do a cowboy hat for the sake of this. So I'm gonna import our cowboy hat. And then again, you'll take your prefab and you'll pull it up. That's gonna bring it in. We don't actually want it on my head. We want it on the Peridot's head for the sake of this. So the Peridot has what's called bones. That's how it's able to move and animate. If you drop down this object, you'll see all the bones. I want to find its head bone, which is in here, I believe. Cool, you'll see this says head top. So I'm going to take my cowboy hat model and I'm going to drag it onto head top. It's going to look strange at first. I it's don't need riding this the hat. <laughs> I mean, that's an effect in itself, but I'm going to scale the hat way down. Let's try one, one, one. Perfect. And then I will move it up on top of the head. Move it forward. All right, oh yeehaw. God. And you'll see because we've actually made it a child of the bone, so we've dragged it into this head top bone, it's actually gonna move with the animation and with the head. So if I switch out the animation, you'll see that the hat's gonna actually stay on its head the whole time. This is the uh, winner for me. I vote this, it's so yeah. cute. I mean, I, yeah, and feel free, you know, we haven't like that, the assets we provided. So if you go to miscellaneous, you'll see there's top hats. These are 2D assets, but feel free to model these if you have modeling skills in 3D if you want, or you can apply a 2D asset for a hat if you want. And you can also parent it the same way. So if you wanted to do a party hat, it would just be 2D instead of 3D, but you could do the same thing and apply it to the top of the Peridot's head. Quickly, I'll try and do one more thing. So I'm going to try to put the Peridot on my shoulder. To do that, I need to import a mesh and we have our full body mesh. You'll see that imports. And then I'm going to add a feature called body avatar drive. So if I go to AR tracking, you'll see body avatar drive. There it is. What you want to do next is drag this full body into the body avatar drive. And let me show you a full body demo video. You'll see what that does is it tracks the body mesh actually to the person's body. We don't actually need to see the mesh so I can hide the mesh. We just actually want to work with these bones. So I will try to find a shoulder, right shoulder. And let's see if that's a good place to put our, our Peridot. So I'm going to drag the Peridot onto right shoulder. Cool, we're close. And then we just need to adjust its position to a point we're happy with it. That looks okay for now. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to bring back this mesh. What's happening is the body avatar mesh is actually detecting the peridot. See here, its head as the head. So that's why it's scaled up. So I need to change this back to the body mesh's head. So when we have it somewhere we like, I'm going to import a material that's called occluder. And what an occluder means is it's going to make the material invisible, but it's going to hide anything that's behind that material. In the Peridot game, they actually use the occluder material. Oh, they have to incredible something like yeah. your desk. So if you have a Peridot that's going under the desk where you can't see it, it will be hidden. So that's a really cool technology. So you'll see here kind of the Peridot, it gets hidden kind of by the head. And again, you can adjust this, take a little more time. Let's see if it works on me. I need to go far enough back to the point where it detects I have a body. Let's, there we go. Okay, I need to move it down a little. I need to move it down a little bit, but you kind of get the idea. And you can do that if you want to put it on your hand, you can use any of these bones. If you want the Peridots to stay on your feet, if you kind of want the Peridot to follow someone as they're running, Again, you're gonna to wanna to work with these bones and put the Peridot behind you. Hopefully if you take everything we learned today, you know, you can tether it to the 
foot of someone and then as they run it's behind them and then you can tap to change it from running to waiting and you can give it glasses and you can play with its scale and you can put it in AR space. So yeah, I hope everyone learned something today and is inspired to make some cool Peridot effects. Thanks everyone for coming. See you later. Bye.